Hello, my name is Laura Mosqueda, and I'm delighted that we can show you what the next phase of your training could look like. Tech School of Medicine, we pride ourselves on challenging paradigms and thinking outside of the box. The amount of exposure that we get as students at LA County and Keck and all these different sites is incredible. The training you get here is as hands-on as it could be. Good morning, Mr. Reed. Oh, do you have the CT scan? Yeah. Let's pull up that CT scan. So this is the CT scan from the first day. We take on the toughest challenges, the toughest cases. We take on the biggest questions for research to try and make a difference and improve human health. We are smack in the middle of it all, right here uh, in this health sciences campus. So we have a county hospital right across the street that has incredible, not only inpatient, but ambulatory facilities. Right across the street in the other direction, we have our Keck Hospital with wonderful ambulatory and outpatient surgery sorts of facilities. Then on my right, we have our Norris Comprehensive Cancer Hospital. And then just across the street, we have our major research buildings too. Research and education are really the foundations upon which everything else at the School of Medicine is, is founded on. You have multitudes of opportunities to do bench work, uh, clinical research, translational research, and really take your work from the bench side to the bedside. Hello. Hello. Hi, Lauren. How are you doing? I'm well, thanks. Morning. This week, in fact, we've had a sickle cell patient, an aplastic anemia patient who came for treatment. We get uh, TTP patients. We have three to five autologous stem cell transplant patients on at any given time. I've been here 44 years, and there's two common foundational principles. Number one, patient interest supersedes self-interest. This is absolutely critical. Your levels are coming down, looking good. Um, so you're thinking discharge? Yeah, I think you can go home today. Yes. Uh, yeah. <laughs> the second is that this is a teaching center, and we talk about the very famous professors that are here to teach you. But the one thing everybody learns is that the master teachers are the patients themselves. And so, sir, we're going to show you what you actually had before and after. Okay. okay. This is what you came in with. <laughs> That's what you came in with. <laughs> Nearly locked out that entire lung, right? Yeah. Oh my gosh. You must have a passion. Part of your mission is to take care of the underserved. We are serving the underserved. We are serving those that are more socioeconomically advantaged. But essentially, you want to serve everyone and everybody and serve them the same, regardless of who they are. So who's our next patient? In here? Yeah. Okay. Yes. These are the patients that, you know, it's not just a pleasure to serve, it's an honor to serve. They're my people. It's, I see myself reflected in the, in the population. I really wanted to come back home in more ways than one. This could be my mom. This could be my dad. This could be my uncle. Um, and no other place could afford me that opportunity besides here. It's been a, the most challenging and rewarding thing I've done in my life, being here. Uh, I've been pushed in ways that I didn't think were possible. We're looking for that spark, that spark in a person that's going to become a good physician who's going to put the patient first. Can we get Dr. Dixon here, please? Can we get some backup? No matter how dramatic this scenario is, it's something that happens. The patient uh, just went non-responsive, her blood pressure dropped. We are pretty much in the ORs from day one. We do cases that other places um, just read about in textbooks. You really want to care for the caregiver. Um, our goal is to prevent burnout before it even happens. It takes about eight months till you start thinking, I can do this, I can master this. Do you see anything worrisome at all? No, I don't. This is not a movie. This is for real. Can you show us two fingers? It's really important that not only do they listen to what the attending has to say, 
but equally important, the attending needs to listen to what the resident has to say. Show me where your pain is. We're here to learn. There's no dumb questions ever. We really want an inclusive environment where you can be the thought and the change leader on our campus. If you come to USC, you will be part of a close-knit, collaborative Trojan community. It's so important to know that you're part of the Trojan family. That's not just a catchphrase here, it's something that we really need. We care about the people who are here. We care about you after you leave. It's a lifelong commitment on our part. Hi, my name is Sandy Zhang Nunes, and I'm the director of the Oculofacial Plastic Surgery Service, and I help run the fellowship. Our fellowship is a two-year fellowship approved by the American Society of Ophthalmic, Plastic, and Reconstructive Surgery, ASOPERS, which all the preceptors are members of. I think we have one of the best fellowships in the country because we try to put together um, an ideal fellowship. So the first year is based at one of our wonderful community partners and you get a lot of bread and butter cases to get under your belt with high volume. And uh, the second year is based at USC where we have wonderful preceptors getting you the full spectrum of the more complex cases. Um, so we also have Jonathan Kim who does more pediatric oculoplastics and ocular oncology. You have um, myself and Jessica Chang and we do complex cases with our neurosurgeons, ENTs, facial plastics, sinus surgeons and our general plastic surgeons. The continuity between the first and second years is at LA County where of course you get such wonderful patience and complexity um, and so the first year you come um, just a part of the time but the second year you are in charge of the service. But of course one of us preceptors is always there by your side to help you manage the patients in the best way possible so you get to learn that but you also get to teach about 21 residents and um, such a wonderful atmosphere, collaborative atmosphere where you get to work with our excellent resident program and you also have the first year fellow um, to, to be teaching as well. I, I just love the collaborations and the, the um, meeting of the minds that we have with all the different preceptors in the program. And that same message is carried forward when we host our oculofacial plastic surgery surgical skills course with our fresh tissue course. And this is a unique program, a two full day in the lab where we bring in preceptors from around the country um, and we learn the full depth and breadth of our entire subspecialty. So everything from, you know, blepharoplasty, upper and lower blepharoplasty, ptosis repair, forehead lifting, um, endoscopically, externally. You get to learn um, lacrimal surgery, DCR, using endoscopic approaches as well as external approaches. Um, when we uh, do surgery in the, in the OR, you're going to learn our external approaches as well as internal approaches. So it is, um, and, and then we also tie in the, the support from the other services. We learn um, some uh, septoplasty from them and you get to learn rhinoplasty and even facelifting from our um, other facial plastic surgery colleagues. Um, and it's uh, such an opportunity to kind of learn the full depth and breadth of our field. I, um, I enjoy it because I learn something every time and um, our fellows get to really be a part of that. Also the research capabilities at USC are amazing, which will be very helpful for ASOPERS thesis, we, um, which is required for membership into ASOPERS. Um, our research includes not only the clinical projects that we all can uh, collaborate on, but we also have the whole U research community at USC to tap into their, the basic science capabilities to really address questions at a deeper level and uh, develop projects that are impactful and meaningful. Another unique aspect of our fellowship is our uh, ability to work with all the different technologies too. So I have a lot of lasers as part of my uh, laser aesthetic service, and that is something that is unique to our fellowship. I also work with our cornea service to do a lot of uh, dry eye research um, and uh, using our uh, light technology to improve that. So there's a lot of research going on and we're at the forefront of that aspect as well. One of the surgical philosophies I like to make sure I teach is that we think about why we are doing things a certain way. So whether it is the anatomy, the thinking in 3D, or whether it's patient outcomes. And so everything that uh, we do, I want you to ask, why are we doing it this way? Um, that makes us better surgeons and translates to you becoming a better surgeon as well. 
Um, and once you're done with the fellowship, you're not done with us. We're gonna keep mentoring you and um, supporting you, helping you find your first job and later career choices. And we really want what's best for you and your career uh, to support you in whichever uh, uh, direction you want to go. Once you've done a residency or a fellowship here, you are ready for the next phase of your career. And that might be going into clinical practice, it might be going into academia, it might be going on for more training, whatever it is, be assured that you are going to be the most well-prepared person possible for that next part of your career.